Are you liking the Miu Mini but really wish it was a little less mini? If you're one of these people, then you're probably going to want to see this. Introducing the Ambernic RG35XX. I had a feeling that with the overwhelming success of the Miu Mini, we were going to see companies come out with familiar devices. I was really anxious to see what Ambernic would come up with, and they finally released this bad boy. Given the Miu Mini is so well loved, Ambernic could only make something even better, right? Well, let's find out. Right out the gate, the Ambernic RG35XX has a bit of a weird name. As far as vertical handhelds are concerned, Ambernic has made the well received RG35 one v and then the more advanced RG353V. But when they came to make this one, they just seemed to run out of name ideas. I get it. In a way, it's less advanced than the others. It's a low-cost handheld, only about $55, which is cheaper than what they've been pumping out lately. With its lower power and lack of analog sticks, it feels like going backwards. But just putting X's in the name just makes it feel a bit odd. At least put a V in there to remind everyone it's a vertical handheld. What an odd name. My RG35 XX is packaged well. No surprise coming from Ambernick. The usual foam faceplate protector, a cleverly packaged charging cable, and a generous surprise, a tempered glass screen protector. With people constantly breaking their MiU mini screens, including extra protection feels like a no-brainer. So for real, I suck at putting these things on, but if you're not me, I would recommend putting this on immediately before you have any regrets. That's my credo. No regrets. It's clear that the RG35XX looks similar to the Miu Mini, but well bigger. Some people, like myself, really desired a bigger Miu Mini, while others are perfectly content with the smaller size that Miu has provided. The Miu Mini is very pocketable, and in all fairness, so is the RG35XX, and it won't catch on anything with no analog sticks getting in the way. The RG35XX comes complete with three colors, a sort of clear purple, a retro gray one that looks incredibly like the Game Boy DMG, and a clear one that I have right here. With the white PCB inside, I think it looks pretty good, and for once I have no regrets on my choice. This presents an opportunity, in my opinion, to make your own color. A lot like with the Odroid Go, you can probably pull the shell off and paint it whatever color you want. I did a review on the Odroid forever ago, and with the right spray paint, you can easily customize away. The overall feel of the RG35XX feels good. I love the weight of it, and it feels really good in my hands. It's definitely bigger, and it feels like it can take a drop. Not that I'm going to try. The 3.5 inch laminated IPS screen is a great size in comparison to the actual device itself. The D-pad, of course, for an Ambernick product is most likely going to feel good. And I have to say it does. It doesn't disappoint and it rolls nicely, but it does feel a little tight if I'm being picky. I'm guessing over time it will feel better. The ABXY buttons are small as expected. I prefer the buttons to be labeled instead of on the actual case, but again, I'm just being picky. If you've had any doubts that this was supposed to attract Miu Mini lovers, the replica Application of the shiny buttons is a big clue. Ambernick hasn't made shiny buttons in a while, but went out of their way to make sure they did for the RG35XX. It could be coincidence, but I have my doubts. Also on the front is a menu button, which sticks out a bit further than I'd like. Not that I expect things to get too crazy, but these functional buttons, in my opinion, are best inset, so no one is pressing them by accident. The start and select buttons feel a bit high on the faceplate, but again, I'm just being picky. The bottom of the unit provides a headphone jack if you get annoyed with the mono sound coming from the front, as well as the USB-C charging port. Expect nothing less from any handheld game made these days. The sides provide a volume rocker, which is an Ambernick thing that I'm done complaining about. It works during gameplay, which in the end is all that really matters. It also sports a power button, a reset button, and two SD slots. One designated to run the entire thing and one for extra games. The included instructions clearly explain what to do to add your own games, stating if you put your own FAT32 SD in, it will make all the game folders for you. I'll definitely be checking that out shortly. On the back is right and left triggers, which of course people have mixed feelings about. It's really difficult coming up with a vertical unit with triggers, and I still feel that it hasn't been perfected quite yet. I personally think that the Miu Mini community is doing a huge favor to the vertical handheld market. There is already a trigger design ripe for the taking, and I have yet to try it, but people really love this improvement. In fact, if you're unhappy with yours, or are hesitant to get one because of the triggers, 
Feel comfort in knowing that the Etsy shop Better Buttons already has you covered for the RG35XX. They look great. On the top is a mini HDMI port to connect to your TV if you happen to have the cable. I'll check that out later and I'm guessing it's going to be pretty cool. Since this unit doesn't have Bluetooth capability, however, you're most likely going to be stuck using the device controls instead of your favorite controller. Stats for the RG35XX are the following. A 3.5 inch IPS laminated display that's 640 by 480, a quad-core ARM Cortex-A9 CPU, 256 megabytes of RAM, and a 2100 milliamp hour battery that lasts about four hours. Each specification seems slightly better than the Miu Mini, which is what I was hoping to see. So let's finally turn on the system and see what out-of-the-box user experience is here. Turning on the system shows an operating system that's as simple as it can get. It looks, well, boring. There are a few features that I appreciate, like a search option, but everything else seems lacking in other options. Honestly, though, if you're a beginner, the simplicity might be just the right thing for you. There's nothing tricky about this. Just pick your game and play. Enough said. Something I wasn't expecting was a drip noise for the menu navigation, and seeing Ambernick do this just hurts inside. At least one of the options is to turn it off, which should be off by default. My system came with a ton of games for what I consider the most sought after systems. The RG35XX can play PlayStation 1 games, Capcom Play System, Neo Geo, Final Burn Alpha, MAME, Game Boy Advance, Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Sega Mega Drive, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, PC Engine, Neo Geo Pocket, Game Gear, and Wonderswan. Gameplay as expected is incredible, and the screen of course looks amazing. I had no issue playing games I threw at this thing. And adding games was a breeze when putting an SD in, and it indeed made the proper directories. Just add your games to the right folders and enjoy. It's just fun. Gameplay and controls are not disappointing by any means. I found myself fumbling a bit when accessing the triggers, but I'm guessing your results may vary. So being a bit late reviewing something that's a few months old already has its benefits. A community member named Black Seraph, hope I got that right, has already started working on the custom firmware Garlic OS, which brings the RG35XX to a whole new level. Garlic OS has a similar look and feel to the original firmware, but this one is built around RetroArch, a familiar emulation suite that I'm getting quite used to. Garlic OS currently supports over 30 systems, has an improved sleep mode, improved button mappings, and a ton of bug fixes on what feels like a daily basis. If you want more from your RG35XX, this is the way to go. Now that the RG35XX has been out for a bit, expect modifications and cases to come out once again. If you're interested in a custom crochet case, I have another from Pigalope that fits mine perfectly. If you're interested, I'll provide a link in the description below. Before I forget, connecting to your TV is not very difficult at all, and it looks great. Even more good news that it also works with the custom firmware. It's a bit buggy when connecting and removing HDMI during gameplay, but I'm sure that'll get fixed eventually. It works, it's not my thing to be perfectly honest, but for people that don't have 320 different ways to play games, this will be desirable. And that's all I have to say about the RG35XX. If you were wishing Miu Mini was a little bit bigger, a little more Ambernick, then consider this. Or, if you're a true fan of Miu, then you probably want to hold out for the Miu Mini Plus, which will most likely fulfill the same wishes, hopefully. But that's an entirely different review. Which would you rather have? There will now be the Miu Mini, the Miu Mini Plus, and of course the RG35XX all pining for your attention. And I'm waiting to see if Pow Kitty will throw their hat in the ring before the end of summer. Will it be cheaper? Time will tell, I suppose. And I hope you stick around for me to tell you all about it. Thanks for watching, thanks for your support, and as always, I'll see you next time. Bye!